Hello there and welcome back to another Luminar Neo tutorial. In today's episode, I will be sharing six tips that will make using the Panorama Stitching extension easier and faster. I discovered these tips over the past three weeks while editing panoramas in three different versions of the extension. Now we won't be needing sample files for this video, so let's jump right into the tip number one. Okay, so starting with the first tip, which you can actually use for other extensions, not just the panorama stitching. I'm talking about the extensions that are in a catalog module. Other than panorama stitching, you can also have upscale, focus stacking and HDR merge. Since one of the recent updates, you are now able to collapse them. So when you click on them, just like the tools in the edit module, they open and when you click on them, they close. Now the trick here is that when you select, for example, the images for the panorama stitching, and then you drag them onto collapse extension and then let go, it actually imports the images into the extension and open it up. Once again, this work for the other extensions too. So for example, let's say I would wanna upscale this image right here, but the upscale is closed. So instead of for me having to have to go open it and then drag the image there, you can just take it, drag it, drop it on it, and it will add the image and open the extension. So I think it's a neat trick, something that is not completely obvious and it can speed up your editing process. The second and third tip involving the custom object composition. So for me to show you, we need to be already in the panorama stitching and we have video available. Now previewing it, you can see that it's a guy on a skateboard sliding through the scene. It's a great example of a video that can be used for this type of panorama or this type of image. Basically with the custom object composition, we select him as he glide through the scene and we're gonna end up with one image with multiple copies of him throughout the scene. So now to start with, let's switch on the custom object composition. Once we do that, we will get the new line under the timeline and also our playhead will get this little blue square with the plus sign on it. To continue, the idea is that you select the frame where you wanna select your subject, then click on the plus sign, and that will bring this little window as an overlay over your image. Now you can drag it over the subject, and just like with the cropping tool, you can extend it and make sure that you select the entire subject. After that, we can move on with our timeline, let's say here, and again, click on the plus sign. So normally we would come down here, click on the plus sign again and move the frame around. However, there is a faster way to do this and it's not completely obvious. Instead of coming back down here, you can go immediately on the image. And as you can see, your mouse now have this little cross overlay. So now you can right away start dragging around your subject and select it. It's much faster and much easier than moving around the initial square. So once again, let's move forward, let's say somewhere around here, and again, let's select the subject. We're gonna do it one more time to get the four subjects, so let's say somewhere around here, and let's select it again. To top it off, we could do one here, let's say before he goes into the shadow. So let's select it and that's about it. So now we have marked the subject on a five different frames and we can continue. However, let's say that we have made one of them by mistake. So we don't actually want it. So we can come back here. Let's have a look. No, that one is okay. I think that this one is okay too, but this one is actually extra. So how do you delete the point? Well, there is not an obvious way to do this. You can right click on a selection, you can right click on a point. What you need to do to delete the point is to use the backspace on your keyboard. So make sure that your point is selected 
and just hit the backspace. Once you do that, you can see the overlay disappear and when you move the head away, that point is gone. After that, if you're happy with whatever you have selected, just click on continue and continue with creating the panorama. And now I'm going to show you the fourth and fifth tip. And for both of them, we need to be on the transformation window in our panorama stitching extension. If you're creating panorama out of images, this is the first window you're going to see. Usually you start by selecting the panorama projection and then you start to rotate the image around and also push it around to make sure that everything is as straight as possible. Now the rotating is quite straightforward. However, how does it work when you want to push the image around? You can do that immediately from here. Simply select the part of the image, then click and drag it up or down. And as you're dragging it around, you can see how it rotates around. And while you're doing that, use the cross as a guide to make sure that everything is straight. You can also zoom in. And for that, you can use the scrolling wheel on your mouse. And once you zoom in, you can again keep an eye on the cross. However, just like on this example here, I would prefer the cross to be here on a side so we can use it as a guide. Now, once I try to push it there, I'm also pushing the image. So I'm actually transforming it. So the way to push the image around without transforming it is very simple. Just hold spacebar on your keyboard. And now you can move the image around together with the cross without adjusting it. So now I can very simply position it, let's say over the side of the building where you can see that it's not very straight. And now I can hover outside of the building, rotate it, and then again, push it around to see if that will help to make sure that it's as straight as possible. So moving the image around without any adjustments is really simple. Just hold spacebar on your keyboard. When you want to zoom out again, you can use the wheel on your mouse or you can go to the bottom of the tool and simply click on the minus, which will zoom out and then use the little slider to come back. Again, even here, you can use the space bar and move it around. Now, since we already here in a transformation window, let me show you the fifth tip. So we have moved the image around and really push it around to see if we can do better job. However, at some point it's just too much. Now, how would we bring it back to the initial view? Actually, in the top right corner of the tool, there is a little arrow. And when you click on it, it reverts the image to original. So once you click on it, it brings it back to what you've seen when we started. So once you reset the image, you can start from the beginning again. Again, hold the space bar, move it around, adjust the rotation. And once you're really happy with the result, all you need to do is to click on continue. Now, before I show you the sixth tip, I'd like to remind you that this tutorial is brought to you by our Luminar Neo Essential Preset Bundle. This bundle includes 40 preset collections, including the brand new Essential Panorama presets. To learn more about it, visit our website, cleverphotographer.com. And to get the best possible price, Click the link in the description of this video. And finally, it's time for the sixth tip, where in this one, I'm going to show you how you can fill in the empty space that you may be going to get when stitching the images together. So of course that I could go ahead and crop the image without using the bottom and top of it. However, sometimes you can't do that. Maybe you have a part of important subject there or some part of the image you really don't want to lose. So what can we do? Let's go ahead and click on crop and then let's save the image. Once the image is created, we can click on it to select it and then move it into edit module. In the edit module, immediately we can see the four spaces we need to fix. So let's zoom in to one of them. And after this, we're going to go into our main toolbar 
and scroll all the way down to the professional tools. Here, we're gonna select the clone tool and that's the tool we're gonna be using to fix these areas. Now, I know that it's not gonna work for everything. However, for the start, it's your best bet. So let's start by selecting the area we want to clone. So let's say somewhere here. Adjust the size of our brush and we can do that with the bracket keys or the size slider in the clone tool. And once we're happy, we can start to paint on the area we want to cover. So let's say right here, when we start to paint, you can see immediately we are taking care of this part. We can do all of that in one go. And when you make sure that your softness is all the way to 100%, you will get pretty decent result. Let's have a look at it, let's zoom out. And I think it's looking quite good. So at the same time, let's take care of this part. So again, let's zoom in, use our space bar to move around. And again, make sure that you mark or clone different part of your sky. We can do that by holding Alt or Option on our keyboard. And again, start painting the area in. Now we need to select another part of the sky, again, using Alt or Option and just paint over it so it looks as good as possible. So that's also this part of the image. Let's zoom out. And now we only have two more spaces. So let's move down. Let's zoom in. Use the space bar to move around. Again, use Alt or Option on your keyboard. Select this part and start to paint in the water. Now there you have it, let's zoom out and there is your result. So as you can see, it only takes few moments to save four empty spaces on your image with the use of clone tool in the professional section of your main toolbar. And there you have it. If you want a copy of our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, there's nothing easier than heading to our website cleverphotographer.com slash luminar gift. While you're there, you can also check out one of our popular Luminar Neo products, or you can stay here and watch more videos about Luminar Neo. For today, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment, and share on this video. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.